first, a school teacher who was inside Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, is telling his story for the first time about the day that 19 children and two teachers lost their lives. He spoke to Amy about what happened when the gunman entered his classroom. And now as law enforcement's response faces scrutiny, he's demanding answers and action. Good morning, Amy. Michael, good morning to you. Arnolfo Reyes says he and his fourth grade class were enjoying end of school year celebrations when the unthinkable happened. That gunman entered his classroom, and we want to warn everyone watching that what Mr. Reyes says, describing what those children went through as they called for help, is extremely difficult to hear. I said, if I die, don't let it be in vain. This morning, Arnulfo Reyes, the fourth grade teacher in room 111 at Robb Elementary School, telling his story for the first time as he recovers in the hospital from two gunshot wounds hit during the horrific massacre that took 19 students and two teachers' lives. It was our typical morning and, um, you know, we ate breakfast together. It was going to be a good day because it was going to be our day of awards. And some kids in my class said that hadn't gotten an award you know, all year, we're going to get an award that day. Reyes says the children were enjoying the end of the year celebration. And while some students went home after the ceremony, 11 from his class stayed behind. They were watching a movie when all of a sudden gunfire rang out. The kids started asking out loud, uh, Mr. Reyes, what is going on? And I said, I don't know what's going on, um, but let's go ahead and get under the table. Uh, get under the table and act like you're asleep. Um, as they were doing that, and I was gathering them under the table and told them to act like they were going to sleep, is about the time when I turned around and saw him standing there. The gunman entering classroom 112 at 11.33 a.m., then making his way into 111 through a connecting door, opening fire. Reyes shot twice, a bullet hitting him in the arm and lung, and a separate one striking his back the 17-year teaching veteran hitting the ground. I told myself, I told my kids to act like I'm there asleep, so I'm going to act like I'm asleep also. And I prayed and prayed that I would not hear none of my students talk. Did you, you, you thought you were going to die? Yes, ma'am. Then while the gunman was still in the classroom, Reyes hearing police nearby, According to law enforcement, seven officers were in the building by 11.35 a.m. They took gunfire and retreated. Reyes says a child in the connecting classroom, 112, called out for help. One of the students from the next door classroom um, was saying, officer, we're in here, we're in here. And then, uh, but they had already left. And then... Um, he got up from, from my, behind my desk and he walked over there and he shot over there again. The gunman going back into room 112 and firing more shots. At 11.58 a.m., children from other classrooms seen evacuating the school. At 12.03 p.m., a child from room 112 calling 911, telling dispatch where she was. By this point, 19 officers were inside the building, but no one went in. At 12.10, 1213 and 1216, more 911 calls. Is there anybody inside of the building? Tyler is advising he is in the room full of victims, full of victims at this moment. Parents outside begging for police to save the children. You know that there are kids, right? They're little kids. They don't know how to defend themselves. You said you were praying. Do you remember what you were praying for, what you were saying? In your prayers? I prayed the, the Lord's Prayer. I prayed my Hail Mary. Reyes says eventually he heard officers come back, telling the gunmen through the door they want him to come out to talk, that they don't want to hurt anybody, but then silence again. More 911 calls, including from Reyes's classroom, but it isn't until 12.50 p.m., one hour and 17 minutes after the gunmen entered the classrooms, that Border Patrol busts in, killing the shooter. After that, it was... Just bullets everywhere, and then I just remember Border Patrol saying, um, get up, get up, and I couldn't get up. Did you feel abandoned in that moment by police, by the people who are supposed to protect you? Absolutely. After everything, I get more angry because 
You have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. I had nothing. You're supposed to protect and serve. There is no excuse for their actions. And I will never forgive them. I will never forgive them. How many students were in your classroom when the shooter came in? 11 students. So the shooter killed every single student in your classroom? Yes, ma'am. That's when I got you thinking, you know. This family lost one. This family lost one. I lost 11 that day. And I just went to my parents and said, I'm sorry. I tried my best. Of what I was told to do. Please don't be angry with me. Reyes says no training could have prepared them for this. Even though the school had extensive protocols, he says laws have to change. It all happened too fast. Training, no training, all kinds of training. Nothing sets you ready, gets you ready for this. We trained our kids to sit under the table. And that's what I thought of, you know, at the time. But we set them up to be like ducks. You can give us all the training you want, but it's... Uh, but laws have to change. It won't never change unless they change the, the laws. Reyes says he doesn't think he can ever return to a classroom, but he's making it his mission to honor the lives of his students and two of his fellow teachers. The only thing that I know that I will not let these children and my coworkers die in vain. Absolutely, I will not, I will go anywhere to the end of the world to not let my students die in vain. They didn't deserve this. Nobody in this world deserves this kind of pain. No mother, nobody deserves this. I will go to the end of the world to make sure things get changed. And it was also really important for Mr. Reyes for all of you to know that those two teachers who lost their lives, his friends, his co-workers, Eva Morales and Irma Garcia, he says they were awesome, amazing educators, and he wants the parents of their students to know that they, too, tried to do everything they could to protect them. So he says, yes, you heard that it's his mission. He wants to see change. He really wants to see the legal age to buy a gun raised. He thinks that will go a long way. And also, I just want to send out my love and thoughts and prayers to him because he's going back into surgery today. He's already had multiple surgeries. He has a very long road to physical recovery. Mentally, I don't, I don't know that he'll I know ever the way get he, there. Why he was kept saying over and over again, please let the parents know I did everything that I yeah. could. He did not have a bulletproof vest. Yeah. The others did. And there's so much more to the interview that we could not share yeah. because it was so... There, there was not a dry eye in the room where we were shooting that because there's no way you can't hear what Mr. Reyes has to say, what he lived through, and not feel and, and, and hopefully want to take some sort of action. I mean, we, we, if not now, when? You know, we've said that so many times. It's but. just heartbreaking. If you can't hear that and want to make a change, and I don't know what's wrong with you, but, you know, the horror doesn't stop for the family, and it doesn't stop for Mr. Reyes and, 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 and the parents. Yeah. I mean, it's just mm. unimaginable. Thank you for bringing that to us. Yeah, I know thank it's you, hard Amy. to do. Thank you.